Hello people of the interwebs, this is Awen, and today I wanted to talk about the practical side of magic. This is my way of encouraging anyone and everyone that wants to make their magic more real life, more physical, to connect with people in a group setting, whether you want to just participate or actually lead your own working groups or real life just social meetups without even a ritual component necessarily. There are some things that I have learned along the way that um, would be helpful for <laughs> at least me a few years ago to have kept in mind. So I wanted to share that because it is endlessly a work in progress. There are things that I continue to learn, some things that I already know and don't always plan for and account for. So here goes, I'm simply gonna jump right into it. The thing about leading a working group, leading rituals and workings in real life is you are still hosting events. You are still uh, leading an actual just real life uh, event and there are real life things that it behooves us to remember and plan for even though especially when the uh, magical element of getting enchanted with whatever the concept for your ritual is right whether it's um, something you've been excited about for a while it can be easy to get caught up in that uh, numinous side of things and neglect the practical so I'm just gonna say this even though it's very boring and uh, a rather dry to mention. This is kind of the theme of this video is kind of dry. Um, keeping supplies on hand, have an itinerary of things that you need um, to have just a, at the bare minimum, like comfortable human social interaction, right? And when I say that, I mean literally, okay, so you're going to do a ritual. Awesome. Let's say it goes off without a hitch. It's uh emotionally resonant, everyone has a great time, you go real heavy, whatever. Um, what if uh, not a single person remembers to bring paper plates, cups, napkins, uh, you know, cutlery, stuff like that? What if nobody brings food? Uh, are you planning on eating? Stuff like that. So I really advise everyone to make a literal itinerary of what is needed for what you are trying to achieve and to give yourself a little more room outside of that too. Because there have been times where I'm like, eh, it's nine o'clock at night, we're starting this ritual at nine. Um, there's no way anyone's gonna want dinner after this. And then we do the working and everyone's ravenous. And we just have light snacks. And yes, I'm in a public hiking type area. So there's human wildlife in the background. But I think you guys get what I'm saying, right? Like these are people-y events. We must account for people-y things to put it very mildly. Um, apart from that, in terms of the actual, in the vein of actual supplies, um, keep things on hand as close to you as possible if you have a regular place that you work. Um, I'm very fortunate in that I have a great friend who lets me host my rituals out of his property, and we have a really cool chest of uh, treasures that he found. That uh, it's, it's, a, it's a chest that doubles as storage and an altar for us. So, whereas I used to lug around uh basically altar staples altar basics in my witchy bug out bag i have a leather bag from amazon that um i used to lug around all my statues alcohol incense you know chalice whatever else we needed right like roses what have you um and that's one way to do it if you have to i definitely um was doing that for a minute but if you can keep things in the same place so you don't have to worry about it I strongly advise that if at all possible. So just keeping uh, your physical supplies in mind, just having like a running list of what you need uh, to do what you wanna do, to execute whatever vision you have, and just have um, that same level of situational awareness about your locations, which is funny to say from a public place, but um, I have awareness around it. If anyone comes up to me, uh, I will happily explain what I'm talking about. But anyways, um, if you are planning a rite out of a public place, for example, take a look at what kind, like a, a campsite. Uh, take a look at what kind of bathrooms they have available. I have done a ritual out of some truly questionable, like outhouse type situations, <laughs> not out of the outhouse themselves specifically, of course, but um, that was the restroom available was basically what my late mentor liked to refer to as buckets of ass. Um, so there are always things like that that you want to keep in mind. What are the trade-offs that you're making, right? Because sometimes I am willing to deal with a certain amount of primitive amenities 
to be way out in the middle of fucking nowhere. If I really want to be in the middle of the forest and be as loud as I want, um, you know, and just really wild out, okay, I'll deal with some buckets of ass for a day or two. But if this is something that's a little more public facing, a little less involved, um, then you want to be aware of like, people need to do uh, people-y things. So that kind of moves into delegation and how important that is. So I think I've talked about this a little bit. I can have a tendency sometimes to get very, um, you know, rabbit holy and enchanted with whatever the next ritual is, whatever the idea behind it is. And for me, what makes pulling that off even close to possible is having someone that um, helps me run errands to get supplies if I need roses, if I need a refill on wine, if I need whatever it is, physical food. Um, so that I can worry about making the ritual happen and not worry about, great, now I have to stop at fonts, I have to print out this outline, blah, blah, blah. So letting people help in various ways is crucial. Uh, some people might feel whatever kind of weird about that. Um, my best advice is to just get the fuck over it. If you don't trust someone to collaborate with you or to help you even a little bit, you should not be circling with them. You should not be doing ritual with them of any kind if you don't trust them in that way. So if it's a personal hangup, get over it. And one of the ways that you could get over it, which has happened with me, is uh, <laughs> one of my uh, heavy learning curve rituals in the past was where, you know, I felt so confident about wanting to just do not everything, but quite a lot. I was biting off a lot. I, to the point that I, um, was so into the energy of it that I didn't print out the outline of the right for, um, this was an ADF ritual and we are used to doing things with ADF, um, by a certain template, by what's called the core order of ritual. And, you know, Raven's Cry, the Grove out here, we don't meet up with each other all that often. So typically there is a physically printed outline and, <laughs> Thankfully, someone else uh, printed one out for me, but it was kind of outdated. I hadn't made all the changes on the draft that that person had printed. And it uh, definitely went off with several hitches. And, you know, that's that's life. That happens. But we do want to, uh, you know, the goal is to be able to focus on the magic itself. And we can do that by giving the practical it's due beforehand and letting other people help us with that. Um, so I would just take an honest stock of what are your strengths, um, what are your weaknesses, and do the same thing with the people who are willing to help you. And that directly goes into any kind of shame or weirdness you have around charging people, drop that too. And mind you, you know, like don't, I'm not saying to ask people for crazy amounts of money, right? I think, so my general asking donation, uh, fee for ritual incidentals, that I ask people is 10 to $20. If you absolutely cannot budget for that, um, I ask that you show up early and help me set up. And that is for a few reasons. Uh, one of the most significant ones is people do not value what is um, what they don't have to invest anything in. And I've noticed, I, I've spoken about this a bit before too, is that people with very good intentions a lot of very gifted practitioners refuse to take money for anything, even if they are paying out of pocket to do it, even if they are taking time away from work and school and various other responsibilities that pretty much all of us have to make this happen. And I cherish that a lot. Um, it's also why I have said before, and I'll say again, if you are not willing to help with the um, quality and just general uh, executing of rituals in real life you don't get to fucking complain about um the organizers or how they're doing it or whatever because everyone has a job and kids and like stuff that they could be doing and they are doing this as a labor of love for the most part occasionally you get the uh power tripping egomaniac that just really wants attention and you know they can go fuck themselves but for the most part people are doing this for community um you know because they want magic to happen in real life and they want to, they want other people to experience that as well. Um, that's what so much of it is about. So, you know, if you are spending any money and or energy on it, I strongly encourage you drop the hang up about letting people help because that's the thing too. You are letting them be part of something uh, 
you know, greater than any individual part and you are letting them be helpful, especially when someone is new, when someone is trying to, pardon me, a hiccup, uh, develop their practice, learn more about the craft, whatever, let them help, you know, and because it, it's not like you are just taking and giving nothing. This is an exchange. Um, so drop the we are not monks. You don't have to take a vow of poverty to do this stuff. I really just recommend dropping that hang up. So uh, where else should I go with this? So I do want to say there's nothing to directly tie this into, but I do want to say um, when you start planning these kind of things, understand that sometimes um, no one could show up. You could have uh, like pretty small turnouts sometimes. I've had um, I had a meetup once where a total of one person came in the course of me sitting around a park for a couple hours. That happened a couple of times, actually. Um, I've had rituals with three other people and I've had them with 30 and 50 other people. So this really, I recommend um, dropping as much ego as possible and knowing what your motivations with this are so that it can just be about that. And every single ritual I do um, every time beforehand, I always, you know, I, I plan for worst case scenario. Um, especially when, uh, I started, uh, I realized that I really wanted to do this stuff more actively in person through some of the more intense lockdown phase of COVID. And that was definitely the roughest going of it for obvious reasons in terms of turnout. But at this point, now that people are, uh, interacting more or less normally again, you will notice, if your experience is anything like mine, that there will always be tons of people who say, oh yeah, that's so awesome, I can't wait to come out, I want to be part of the community, I want to go to events, and they will never fucking once show up. They will never once show up, they will either always have an excuse, or they won't even bother, and they will just kind of drop off the face of the earth, and you can, I have two things to say to that. One, never take it personal. Two, do not be afraid to have boundaries. For me, um, if you completely flake on me more than once, you get one mulligan. Um, if you have a very good reason, like, uh, some kind of family, like, you know, something serious, I'm not going to be an asshole. Life is life. Do what you need to do. But if you tell me that you are going to, if you are SVP, if you tell me you're going to come, I plan on you being part of this and you drop out more than once, you're disinvited. It's, uh, it's not fair to me. It means that my planning is going to be off because my current working group is not huge. Um, at most, we'll have maybe like eight or nine people um, at our bigger events. And I do that on purpose because I want, um, you know, I vet. I I've talked about this before, but this is something that um, I really recommend people to not be afraid of is on that same line of boundaries, having a questionnaire having things that matter to you about who you allow even if it's not your property into your space into your working group there are certain like i don't want to do ritual with creepers or sexual predators or anything like that um so half of the questions in my questionnaire are you know magical and are about okay what's your background what's your practice and what have you um but some of them are kind of deliberately there to poke like hey are you sane are you relatively stable? Like, uh, are you a functional human being more or less? And it's, um, hopefully this doesn't need to be said, but it does not make you an asshole to, uh, ask questions like that and to value things like that. And anyone who tells you otherwise is full of fucking shit because think about it. There are, this is something to consider, um, based on how public or not public you want what you do to be. Uh, the internet is full of a wide variety of characters. I think all of us know that. Um, not all of them are good people. Um, not all of them are reliable. Maybe some of them are good, but they're crazy as shit. And where you share what you do is going to make a big difference in terms of who shows up. And the level of vetting and gatekeeping, which is not always a bad fucking thing, um, just in terms of like, Am I letting safe people into my, uh, into my fucking ritual? These are all things to take pretty seriously. So I really just recommend know what you value, know what you prioritize and what you are trying to achieve. And do not be afraid to ask people questions based on that. 
and to not be afraid to not let everyone in because I absolutely don't. Um, I am happy with a smaller number of people who I trust who are either on the same page or compatible with uh, what I'm kind of trying to bring into the world here. And um, I would rather build that slowly, if at all, <laughs> more humans, uh, than just try to appeal to as many people as possible, which by the way, doesn't even necessarily work because people can, uh, people can tell that when you are just trying to appeal to numbers, to just getting anyone and everyone in the door to look like, oh, I have this packed ritual. Um, people who really care, like the people who are there to do actual magic are going to see that and probably get put off because at that point it's just a social event, which if that's what you're trying to do, by all means, like absolutely do that. Um, you know, there are people who focus on that as really their goal, but this is where a connection of self-awareness of what you want and how you present it to other people, it does really make a big difference. So I think I'm going to cap this video off pretty shortly, but I think I've covered some basic, you know, just the boring stuff that I've often complained to my cupbearer about, like when we're making a last minute run to the supermarket because we need livers for um, the chaos gods offering or whatever the fuck. Um, just think about the practical uh, side as well. And I guess the last thing that I will talk about is, I've said this before, but maintain other hobbies. Have a life outside of this stuff so that, um, you know, you, <laughs> you have a whole life uh, because it's not a matter of if, it will be when you need to just take a minute and recuperate and sort of let your magical cup refill. You have things to do outside of that. You have a sense of yourself because when people go too hard with identity of whatever variety, but let's, you know, just to stick with the, the witchcraft and paganism, you see people freak out sometimes because they're like, oh, I'm not doing enough. I need to be doing spells all the time. I need to be doing rituals all the time. It's like, no, the fuck you don't. You absolutely do not. Um, that is not what defines it. What defines that is you really being in it for the long haul, taking a more sustainable uh, approach and letting yourself actually um, move with the seasons, which is what we are most of us, a lot of us are, <laughs> that's kind of the whole idea here is that there will be fluctuating levels of energy and different kinds of activity that is happening around the wheel of the year and being able to feel those tides, what makes those um, points in the wheel different each year, what brings different um, facets of their energies and what have you. Our ability to feel into that is contingent on how sane and functional are we um you can only i truly believe your ability to be functional on both sides of the hedge the veil as it were um they're directly related to each other if you are completely fucking unhinged you can't handle normal things your magic is going to be frantic your magic is going to be you know perhaps pretty potent it definitely can be potent and i'm not saying it's non-existent but it is not the kind of thing that lends itself to a sustainable long-term practice that, um, especially not something that can, you know, be connective with other people in a healthy way. So nothing I'm saying today is really ground shaking, um, but this is just the practical side of things that I think it's helpful to talk about. So just have a healthy sense of yourself outside of one hyper-specific thing, right? Because sometimes, it gets to a point where like you take yourself so seriously that it becomes pretentious and insufferable and the people that aren't into your specific rabbit hole are like dude you are so bent out of shape about like oh i i'm pulling from this style of ritual instead of the next and that means i'm fake or more legitimate or whatever y drop that shit <laughs> like that's i love passion i there are times when even obsession is uh you know, it, it can be, it's, it, it, there's a time and place for it. But for me, at least part of why I practice is to have a more enriched, uh, holistic perspective type of life, accounting for the full spectrum of human experiences and emotions and not forcing myself to be some caricature or, you know, just two dimensional, you know, whatever fucking Instagram post or, or, or whatever the fuck it is. It, it's to be an actual embodied more instinctual human being. 
So hopefully any of this makes any kind of difference. Um, like I said, I really encourage people to, if you want to start your own group, if you want to start doing things in real life, fucking do it. Do not be afraid to learn along the way. If anyone wants to complain, tell them to help or shut the fuck up. Cause uh, <laughs> this stuff is not easy and it is a, uh, it's a, it can be a huge demand on your time. So make sure that you know how to take care of yourself. You let people help and fucking enjoy it. Absolutely fucking enjoy it. So um, I'll do something uh, more in the actual mythic practice realm next video. But this one has been on my mind because I've just been a hair away from burnout, to be totally honest myself. Um, the past month or two, I bit off a lot and, you know, I'm happy with it. Um, I'm, I'm glad to uh, be as active or about as active as I've wanted to be. But I went, I think, from a one ritual, one weekend to speaking at PCR at the Pagan Community Retreat to the next, uh, the next weekend was a blood moon ritual with my own group and the just the back to back to back and I do have other responsibilities crazy enough I do have a job and um you know human things and I just got to a point where I'm like my cup is feeling pretty dry I am gonna do uh I'm gonna go to Lush I'm gonna drink Starbucks I'm gonna be a basic ass bitch for at least a week here and just uh let that cup refill by just doing normal people muggly things it does not take away from you it helps you uh so something that i really like that uh another druid once told me is that when one uh muscle as it were is sore is lagging in some way is not performing at its best um flex the other so when you're spiritual uh when that's kind of drying up when that's lacking go do normal things go do physical things go see your friends go work like whatever it is to be embodied in the day to day focus on that and you know the reverse as well when you are just feeling fed up and you need more that's when you dip into the reflective and the magical so all this is easy to say it's harder to do so again i commend anyone who is trying and anyone who doesn't like it can help or shut the fuck up so that is my tired little rant for the day and i wanted to end this video by just pulling a card for inspiration and if you made it this far, comment on what you think about this card. So let me shuffle this a little bit and I'll be on my merry way. <laughs> Lordy, okay. Eight of Swords. This chick uh, feels like she's been left to die, left alone in this uh, barren field of swords. This card can talk about betrayal, a lot of negative emotions, and, you know, it's not necessarily a great time. However, I want to point out that her bonds here in the Eight of Swords, they're actually pretty loose. So when this is the situation when you feel that you are surrounded by nothing but hurt or pain, indecision, anything like that, feel that grassy, grassy earth beneath your feet. Realize that you do have all the ingredients of life and creation at your fingertips and pick up one of those swords for yourself. So thank you guys for listening. I hope you have a phenomenal weekend. I will be continuing my uh, <laughs> self-care uh, little moment by wenching out at Renaissance Fair with some of my good friends. So hope you guys have a good one.